Hello, I'm Lance Nichols of Montana Space Grant Consortium's Borealis Program at Montana State University. This is high altitude ballooning number two, types of balloons. Let's get right into it. The very first type of balloon I'd like to talk about is uh, probably the larger balloon that you see um, in commercial use, uh, at least um, in the public eye, and this is a uh, hot air balloon. Um, and in our case, uh, this would be a solar hot air balloon. Um, so normally um, these solar uh, balloons, uh, normally the hot air balloons um, use some kind of uh, combustion uh, to heat up the gas inside them. But um, for our purposes, these high altitude uh, balloons, uh, hot air balloons are um, solar balloons. Um, so their float time is, you know, 15 hours or so. Uh, the sun has to be up in order to uh, make them fly, of course. Otherwise, they're uh, no longer uh, buoyant, and they will come back to the ground. Um, they can be made out of plastic or a fabric. Um, the airtight is not important. Uh, it is beneficial, though, um, because you'll have leakage of the less dense gas out if you have a, a porous... Uh, Material, of course, um, so you can you can uh, probably reach some higher altitudes if you have um, uh, airtight surfaces. Um, and then here is kind of what your pro uh, flight profile will look like. So you'll rise up to your altitude, um, up to your float altitude, uh, and then the the sun will set or it will um, decrease the amount of uh, uh, surface area you uh, you have, and then you will um, begin to decrease in altitude um, until you hit the ground. Um, so here's the ideal uh, density of gas. Um, so you have your pressure, um, you have your mass of your gas, um, and then you have your gas constant, your temperature. So these uh, three are constant. So basically density is a function of temperature. Um, so when the temperature increases, the density decreases, and that will give you your buoyancy. Um, so basically what you want your balloon to um, absorb the sun's radiation so it gets hot. Um, and then additionally, you want your balloon to be open at the bottom here. Um, and this will allow the uh, gas as it becomes less dense uh, to push uh, that other gas out of it so that it's no longer inside of the envelope. Um, and this will allow your balloon to actually float because if it's sealed, um, its density can't change. Um, or at least it can't change very much because it would uh, um, have to uh, expand the actual envelope. Um, and the envelope is resistive to those um, changes in volume. Uh, and then your, your density differential collapses and you're no longer, to, uh, no longer able to maintain your buoyancy, so you'll return to the ground. Um, so. This applies to other balloons, of course. <laughs> if your density differential collapses, then you will um, you also return to the ground. Uh, the second type of balloon I want to talk about is a latex balloon. Um, these are basically a big party balloon. Um, their flight time is about five hours. They don't reach a float um, so much as they go up until they explode. Uh, so basically, um, they just they're made out of light. They're basically just rubber. So here's your flight uh, profile. You go up, you just keep going up. Um, so here, you know, you're, you're slowing down because you're no longer um, pushing as much air out of the way. Um, or you're slowing down because you don't have as much buoyant force. Sorry. Um, and then eventually you uh, your ex balloon explodes before it reaches its theoretical float altitude um, up here somewhere. And then it, uh, then it descends to the ground. Um, so basically, you take uh, some kind of lifting gas, some lighter than air gas, uh, helium or hydrogen, uh, and you fill fill your latex balloon with it, um, and then you seal it at the bottom so it's uh, fully contained, um, and then it's uh, lifted by its buoyancy. Um, basically, the pressure goes down, volume goes up, so your balloon stretches as it rises so that it can uh, try to maintain uh, the same pressure as the, of the, as the atmosphere is um, as it goes up. And then eventually it reaches a critical diameter. Um, some uh, failure mode propagates uh, 
through it and the balloon disintegrates into a bunch of rubber bands basically. Uh, the next type of balloon I want to talk about is a zero pressure. Um, so a zero pressure, they can float for several days. Uh, so basically you go up and then you kind of just slowly go back down because you have some leakage going on. Um, and they are made out of plastic. Uh, so they have a static volume. Um, so once again, the balloon is filled with lifting gas, but the entire volume of the balloon is not filled. Um, so it's once again lifted uh, pretty much the exact same as the um, latex balloon. Um, and as the gas expands, this time the it doesn't push against the latex membrane, it just expands to fill the um, volume of the balloon. So if we go back to this photo, you can see that um, that there's lots of balloon material out here and the lifting gas on the ground is only occupying this much of the volume. Um, so there's a lot more volume for it to uh, go into. So it begins to fill the volume and eventually it will occupy all of the volume um, of the balloon. And at that point, it will begin to come out of the bottom of the uh, vent arms, which is basically it has an opening um, to allow the gas to come out. Um, and then at some point, once it has uh, vented some of its uh, lifting gas, it will come to an equilibrium um, where the uh, pressure on the inside is the same as the outside um, and the gas is no longer being vented, um, but the balloon is taking up its full volume. So that is the zero pressure, and that's where it gets its name, is there's a zero pressure differential. Last is the super pressure balloon. Uh, super pressure balloons are used for very long duration um, flights. So you can see here several months, you can have a balloon um, float, that's a super pressure. Um, and it can adjust its, its float altitude using a ballast balloon. And once again, it is made of plastic. Um, so here is what a uh, super pressure flight could look like. Uh, you go up, you fill the ballast balloon some, you go down, you release some out of the ballast balloon, and then you can basically change your altitude to whatever you want, um, or to whatever is within the uh, bounds of the what the um, ballast balloon can hold. So it's filled with lifting gas, goes up to its float altitude, um, and then it maintains a positive internal pressure um, and reference the surrounding atmosphere. So that's where it gets its super pressure um, name. And uh, basically using um, very special pumps because you're pumping very uh, low density gas, um, you can pressurize uh, the ballast balloon beyond the, um, the density of the air outside or around the pressure outside. Um, and then it will uh, increase the overall uh, mass of the system and you will begin to descend. And then if you want to uh, ascend again, then you can um, vent some of that out because it'll be pressurized and it'll want to escape and then you can go back up. Um, this, this is showing an external design of uh, a ballast balloon. They can also be internal. Um, and if they're internal, then you actually get to double dip on your um, uh, how much mass you gain. Uh, so if you put in um, some gas here, you're going to also um, pressurize your lifting gas inside of your normal uh, balloon envelope, which is this one. So then this one is, this ballast balloon is filled with air. Okay, just to make that clear. All right, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe and uh, feel free to drop any comments. I will be happy to answer them. I will be releasing more in-depth standalone videos for each of these types of balloons at some point in the future. And when I do that, I'll be adding cards um, to each of the balloons so that you can um, find those more in-depth videos. Have a good one.